Yo, check! Mula sa Bayang Pilipino, I am John DBS and today we're doing a commentary for Tales of Zestiria, Alicia's Story, RTA, which can be run in about 30 minutes but for marathon purposes, we can commit to an estimate of about 33, 34, or 35 minutes. So this is Alicia's Story, the DLC, the sequel to the main story of Tales of Zestiria and it is such a god sent run that this can be performed in a short time and let's get to the video right away by the way my current pb here as you have seen is a 29 21 which marks the world's first sub 30 and actually there is a previous runner for this game which is the japanese runner hehen 10 who also ran the main game zesteria back in the day so let's go to the video So this is Tales of Zestiria, the one of the mothership titles for the Tales of series, which was released in 2015. Come on, I I need to get a full run now. If I don't, I'll have to come back tomorrow and do another set of <laughs> During this run, I was pressed. I was pressed up with time because I have been grinding this category for two plus hours straight. So. Here is Alicia's story, the start of Alicia's story DLC. We we activate some boons so that we can conveniently we can conveniently navigate the whole area and also our menuing item, menuing our skills that we need for the whole fight. One thing to note is we're pretty much activating the skills that are very useful in battle especially the 10k bonus in which it is very important for the battle gauge uh, for the, rather the blast gauge management for the blast gauge management because this blast gauge is very crucial in activating Mystic Arts. And Mystic Arts in a Tales game is essentially the most powerful move. And also in this game, this is also your main source of reli reliable damage. Significant damage, especially to the upcoming boss fights. So this fight that we're, you're seeing now is just a scripted fight. It's just a scripted fight. There's nothing too special. And actually the story of this is... Let me describe first the main story of Zestiria in one sentence, which is essentially Sorei goes to the quest of purifying the whole world. So imagine this is Konosuba and Aqua tries to purify the whole world. Purification, purification, purification. So that's essentially the story of Zestiria in one sentence. <laughs> And this Alicia story is essentially the sequel where Alicia is very curious on what happened to Soray after the final fight in the main game. And there he encounter, uh, she encounters Rose. She encounters Rose, which is the main, also one of the main characters in the main game who happens to possess the power of of forming bonds with your squires. The squires are essentially your elementals. Elemental, uh, let's just say elemental spirits. Elemental spirits in which you can, you, you can actually use them in battle. Also your main heroines, yeah, main heroines. Oh yeah, I forgot, also in this game, you can, you can fuse with your squires and be the powerful, uh, beat so many enemies using their powerful elemental moves. Much more powerful actually. Because in this game, fighting them as mere humans will only at best give you melee and an art attack. While the squires can actually do middle to long range magic attacks, elemental attacks. So what you're doing here now is we're actually menuing, disabling all, almost all arts except for a very few because these are the most useful skills that we, or arts that we want to actually, that we want to actually use throughout the run, throughout the run. And we're adjusting also the tactics. So essentially 
Lila, the fire, the fire Sera is essentially uh, doing mainly on the mainly idle and on the main attack. And Alicia is more on the close combat. And as you are seeing here, it's more uh, the Armatized wow, Rose that's a and Edna. It's essentially a more powerful thing where you can actually perform mystic art, more powerful mystic art, more powerful attacks. That's essentially what happened. So this fight should take only about 10 seconds. Yeah, ten, the first mandatory fight. So as you have seen in the splits, there are six mandatory fights in this game. There are six mandatory fights in this game. Two of them are pretty much very easy fights. It's not that problematic. It's just your common enemies. Well, if, if, if the enemy scatter, uh, well, And also, what you have seen earlier in the equipment is also, you're just essentially attaching titles so that you can uh, increase much of the stats. And also, one of the stats, as you have seen maybe earlier with Rose, is you want to activate the characteristic stun. Stun, chances of stun like 20% plus 20% because in this game, Getting stuns, getting downs, also that's very applicable to almost every Tales game, gives you access to higher chains, higher chains, higher damage, higher everything. I think that's a general rule in JRPGs as well, that you essentially get, you essentially deal more damage, way more damage, especially if the enemy is... Greatly down. Greatly down. So we're approaching now to the second fight, which is another soldier. So if in the first fight you encountered, uh, we encountered a mob of knights, this time we're we're only doing one, and it should be a very quick fight as well, about 10 to 15 seconds. Also, the reason why we're leading with Edna here, the Earth Seraph, the yellow-haired girl, is simply because uh, you want to deal as much damage as possible with the magic art. And as you have seen earlier also, I shifted the tactics to charge forward because I really want, uh, I really want to finish the fight quickly. So that's it. You might have observed why I have been adjusting the angle to diagonal movement to make it seem that we're moving diagonally is simply because in this game there is a special movement glitch that it seems it's an it seems that the devs of this game uh, was not able to fully cover all movements that the diagonal seems way faster in terms of movement. Meanwhile, the straight is a bit slower in terms of movement. Anything beyond the diagonal, diagonal movement is slower. So that is the glitch for the main game. So the reason why we're using Holy Bottle here is we want to... We want to erase all of the weak encounters. So what you're seeing here is actually some of the stronger encounters in which the Holy Bottle does not completely cover. So you still see some encounters. But at the very least, we're able to eliminate most of them so that we can move freely. And also we used and consumed Elixir. Sim this will be a theme of the whole run that we will consume a lot of Elixirs and You'll be very surprised that this DLC gives you 10 elixirs at the very start of the game because the game, apparently the devs want you to succeed, really. <laughs> and what elixir does is that not only it restores a lot your whole health, even your status, it also recovers 3 blast gauge, 3 BGs. And that will be our main umbrella for the whole run. Because, again, as I have mentioned earlier, the Mystic Art, the Mystic Art consumes 4 BGs in this game, 4 blast gauges in this game. 
And to quickly recover it, elixirs are the most reliable form of recovery because you can actually recover three instead of using arcane bottles, which is which only recovers two. <laughs> so it actually rec recovers only two and can be only used during battle. So that's a bit problematic there. So elixir you can use outside battle. So th this is the very next mandatory fight. I name it Sus Maltran because it's actually not Maltran that we're fighting here, actually. It's just a disguise. And you know in this area there is a certain boss fight which performs a really good disguise. And that's Simon. <laughs> that's Simon. So, the strategy here is actually... You might have guessed it. We're pretty much fishing for stunts for Maltran. We're pretty much using, we're pretty much applying stuns to Maltran and use Mystic Arts twice or if we're very lucky, thrice. That is pretty much what we are doing for the rest of this run. And remember, this is a short run. It can be about 30 minutes. So, and there are four remaining boss fights. So, you're about, so that is pretty much the whole team of this run and the remaining mandatory boss fights and we're done ah sorry no <laughs> for some reason Matra was able to survive but uh we have nothing to do but we have nothing to do but we have to defeat it until the copycat dies so essentially that is what we're doing. And a good fight for Maltran, the sus Maltran or doppelganger Maltran is ascent is anything anywhere between 30 to 50 seconds I guess. But that fight is average because it's pretty much our anywhere from 40 to 50 seconds of that fight is essentially average. A good fight would be 30 to 40 seconds. A good fight. A really good fight. And the reason why I ended up red here is simply because uh, in my previous PB, I really had a good Maltran fight which only transpired like 35 seconds, I guess. 35. 30 to 35. And that's a really good fight. So... In this DLC, this DLC is quite weird for having so much dungeon crawling. Pretty much empty, especially if you apply holy bottles. But I guess once we get to the Elaine ruins, which is essentially the whole essential dungeon that we that we need to cover for the whole DLC. We will see how we can actually avoid a lot of enemies. It's like Mission Impossible in this in this game. So we pick up an arcane bottle so that we don't spend too much on the arcane bottle. And this is an essential item that we need to pick up which is the grounded shoes. The grounded shoes essentially give you capability against winged foes and as you have seen in the splits, one of the mandatory fights is actually a winged, double winged folks. So this is one, one of the reasons why we need the grounded shoes. This will be, this will attach us capability or we can deal more damage with the winged folks. That is essentially how Tails equipment works. You... You essentially, you essentially optimize your equipment so that you can deal more stuns, deal more damage with some certain foes. And what you have seen also why we particularly check some boxes for, for the boons. And also we also menu again for Rangus, which is our Normin, because that will boost for the whole dungeon our capability to stun. Remember, we have to stack up all possibilities of stuns we want more chances of stuns for each of the remaining boss fights 
That is essentially what we this game actually wants you to do. Keep on stunning so that you can deal more damage. You can stack up more damage actually. So this dungeon, as you have seen, there is a tentacled tentacled encounter right there. That tentacled encounter wa has so wide hit boxes that you don't want to trigger an, an encounter. An encounter of this would amount to a red red or rather a waste of 10 seconds for the whole run. Waste of 10 seconds. We don't want that because 10 seconds is a lot in this short run. 10 seconds is a lot. So this is like Mission Impossible in these ruins. And the reason why even if we have the Holy Battle from the from the Glav Glavin Basin, it's simply because all of the enemies that we're encountering here are really high level. It's way higher level than our current party level right now. Most of these enemies are in the 80 plus. In the 80 plus. And while our party is like level 75 or 76 or even 77 so that is why we are seeing a lot of red dots there which are essentially encounters and again this is the diagonal movement glitch in the works diagonal movement glitch in the works we open these treasures for Legless Ring because this is very important for the next fight. As you have seen, Legless Ring gives you capability against another type of foes which are Apodus, which are essentially snakes. Because the very next boss fight is actually a double snake. Our very next boss fight. And we again apply the strat of consuming elixirs to Rose the red-headed girl and I think I also applied it to ah no, no to, not to Lila because the fire setup because we already Lila still has five five full DG so this is the double snakes so the main strat here is you use drop battle first because this is the very first fight that you can actually earn tons of money and we armatize to the fire Fire armor, we do the fire amortization because this is your best bet against best bet against the snakes. One of the snakes has fire weakness, the other snake has normal weakness, physical weakness. So your best bet here is actually the fire seraph, fire seraph armatization. Combine Rose and Lila, the fire seraph. That's it. And what I'm actually doing here is. We're using one of the great techniques of the armatization. This is a, a quicker way to deal significant damage than to consume 4 BGs blast gauge. Because this will this will entail more consumption of elixir. So that is essentially essentially what we're doing here. So yeah, that one. So the moment you stun, the moment you stun a foe. The moment you stun a foe, your the R button right there is actually activating one blast gauge, using one blast gauge to trigger the armatization arc, and that actually is faster if you if you're able to stun the foe. So that's essentially the whole strat in the double snake fight. Unfortunately, I did not. It's almost the same pace because I. <clears throat> I was not able to recover the BG ahead of time with Edna. So that was a bad, that was quite a, an, an unfortunate circumstance that I have run into. So what we're doing here now is, you've seen earlier, I have, I have bought a lot of items from the shop so that I can buy more items. And essentially what we're doing here is, we buy some elixirs. Our glasses and our team bottles but the more important thing here are the elixirs because these are your faster way of recovering but uh, blast gauges these are much faster than using our team bottles especially with the delay in items in this entails games 
I don't know if I, uh, you might have noticed by now, consumption of items entails you delay uh, for with a couple of seconds, maybe about five to six or seven before you can use an item again. So in a way, you can actually spam using items, just like in turn-based games, because Tails is an entirely different world. Yeah, after the snakes, we encounter Z Zavid, which is the Wind Seraph. So what we have been using are essentially Edna, the Earth Seraph, and Lila, the Fire Seraph. Here we pick up Zero Impact Vest and also some some items as well, some other items as well. Because uh, the Zero Impact Vest will is very important for Zavid. This will boost his capabilities, especially for stuns, if, I'm not, if I remember correctly. We'll go back to that once we actually do the menuing. So, once we reach the upper parts of these ruins, it's pretty much uh, more tense to avoid the enemies. Because some of these enemies are faster, especially the pixie that you have seen earlier. There are some snakes. Some are even ghouls or even ghosts, puppeteers, in which if you're not very careful, you might trigger an encounter or even a dangerous encounter. By the way, if you happen to trigger a dangerous encounter, that's a really big time loss because that's about um, 15 to 20 seconds, I guess, before you can actually escape. And by that time, most of your party members are dead. <laughs> before you can even escape. So that's a really bad thing. The moment you trigger the moment you trigger a dangerous encounter. Dangerous encounter simply means you let two or more enemies creep closer to you and you trigger an encounter. Trigger an encounter, yeah. So this dungeon is actually long. So this is one of the reasons why Running diagonal comes in handy. This is one of the cool movement glitches that you see in the Tales games. So we're now approaching nearer to the floor where we encounter the very next boss fight, the Double Birdies. We're just one floor away. And we're about to do another menuing as well. So this time we're using elixirs to both Rose and Lila, the Fire Sarah. And we also adjust some equipments. Here we pick up an elixir. So that's also very important. So again, equipment, equipment, equipment. So we adjust. Demon Ring because we fight the Valkyrie which is a fiend, class of fiend, and then we equip Alicia with Demon Ring, and then equip Zavid with more stuns actually, more stuns. So this particular fight is really difficult because one of the Valkyrie, that one, has fire weakness and that rock bird, the the big bird, has no weakness. The only weakness it has is the water element, but unfortunately you don't have Mikleo with you. So that's the, your only way of relying that of a reliable damage is actually Edna's final embrace in which we primarily enabled it earlier. And look at that! Look at that! The reason why we use our glass <laughs> the reason why we use our glass is we want both of them to freeze in time because the Valkyrie is very annoying especially with some of its arts. It can actually delay your movement and the rock is also annoying that it can also inflict you with some status status effects such as slow. 
So, that is essentially a godsend split because I was able to do the fight within 10 seconds. Simply that I was able to stun them both and at the same time I was able to trigger a bigger chain like 1.8 or something if I if I if I've seen it correctly. So that was a good very godsend split. At this point I my my whole being is shaking that time because that was a really good really good fight. It's a 10 second fight. It's a 10 second fight that transpired in that segment because I've been practicing that I have been practicing that fight for a, for about two to three days and I never got that kind of time I think it's just very coincidental that it's simply because both Lila and Rose had high BGs or high blast gauges that it dealt more damage so it's something I think that happened it's not a miracle actually because that was what happened during my practice sessions practice sessions it's just that I just thought of it during the run <laughs> just thought of it during the run so that is much about the birdie fight so the very next fight mandatory fight is just the final fight so what what we've been doing here in this dungeon is that we're actually looking for where Soray is. We're just looking what happened to Soray, explaining everything to Alicia what is what happened to Soray after the final fight with Hedal, the final boss of the main game. The final boss of the main game. And essentially what happened in this DLC is just it's just a normal quarrel between Alicia and Rose. And by the way, Alicia and Rose are portrayed differently if you're familiar with the anime version of this, which is Tales of Zestiria the Cross. And also, you have seen Maltran earlier, right? Maltran is not actually a villain in the anime compared to the main game. It's not actually a villain. <laughs> Compared to the main game, she's actually one of the boss fights. So we're now in the 11th floor, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so that's 11th floor. At uh, the 12th floor, rather. So. We're switching equipments again this time. We're giving Zavid the as usual the elixir strats. We're giving Zavid the demon ring because we're pretty much doing damage to the to the Baphomet using wind armatization. This is the only fight where we will use wind armatization. <laughs> You've seen right there, Alicia. We were able, Alicia and Rose were able to stun the Baphomet in time. So we're doing tons of damage as well. And that was a godsend split, actually. Godsend first fight, first phase. So again, the usual. We're fishing for stuns. We're, we're we're waiting for either Alicia or Rose to actually damage one of them. Uh, actually, stun stun the boss, and that triggers the second phase. So in the, during that transition, we will recover using elixir. We will recover using elixir and with arcane bottle. Oh, I, I was not able to do it in time. <laughs> but that's fine. Man, I'm getting nervous for so this is the second phase. We fight now two Baphomets. The final fight. So it's such a godsend that Alicia was able to stun one of the Baphomets. So that we have another significant damage. And... Do two consecutive Mystic Arts. This is our main strat in this fight. 
the mechanics for this fight is that you have to kill both Baphomets at the same time. And the strat here is that after stunning one Baphomet and using two consecutive Mystic Arts, we will use it the same strat. We will, we will use the same, same strat. This time, we will do for the other one. And again, we were able to stun it on time again. So, after this Mystic Arc, the fight ends. And there, we're done with the DLC. Wow! <laughs> and I was very surprised because I was able to finish the fight in less than 30 seconds. I did not anticipate this record-breaking fight. I did not anticipate this record-breaking fight that I was able to do it in less than 30 seconds. The bird, the double bird fight was about 10 seconds. And this is the story where I was able to get the sub 30 for this game. And also a low sub, a low 29. And it's, it's a really good run. So this marks the first, uh, the world's first sub 30 for this particular DLC. So what happened after this fight is that the, uh, Alicia was able to talk to Soray. That's it. Alicia was able to talk to Soray. And after that, she was able to... She was able to... Form a firm decision that she will continue with the pact. Yeah, that, that's it. With the peace treaty. So this marks the end of Tales of Zestaria, Alicia's story. I believe one of the reasons I ran this is this is a really good short Tales game to run. And I really hope that this will get in the mainline GDQ. A Tales game has never been into a mainline GDQ and I believe with a game this short, this is the very first Tales game God, I did not expect that this will step in the mainline GDQ. The very first Tales game. I also believe this is the strongest entry simply because this is a really good game. <laughs> Especially showcasing the movement glitches and also how a Tales game works. And on that note, and on that note, because uh, after that fight, I was very surprised with what happened, so I am very happy that uh, I was able to get that sub-30. Because that is my main target time, in all honesty. And on that note again, mula sa bayang Pilipino, John out.